Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Meet the Candidates session, where we will be profiling the two candidates running in the 2024 board election for treasurer. My name is Andrea Kay. I'm your Chief Executive Officer and Chief Electoral Officer, and we'll be moderating this session. Also joining us for this session, providing assistance, is Athena Brown, Senior Strategy Project Manager, and Clark Allure, IT Trainer. Athena will serve as the two-minute timer. Here's the format, format that we will be using. Each candidate will be provided two minutes to make an opening statement prior to answering any questions regarding the role of the treasurer. For the questions, each candidate will have the opportunity to respond up to a maximum of two minutes. I will start alphabetically and then rotate the order. Please note that when one candidate is answering a question, the other candidate will be placed in the waiting room. They will be called back when it is their turn to answer the question. At the end of the session, each candidate will have the opportunity to provide closing comments of no more than two minutes each. So we will start with the opening statements of no more than two minutes. The first candidate is Karen Mueller. Karen, you can make your statement. I'd like to just start by telling you why um, I put my name in for this position. So I'm going to start with my statement. As a dedicated member of, the, of ONA since 1987, I have proudly served in many leadership roles, including treasurer secretary for our local executive for the past seven years. My journey with ONA began with a personal experience that underscored the importance of standing up for our collective rights. When I advocated for the interests of our members, I faced resistance from my employer who sought to intimidate us into compliance. Witnessing how they treated a nurse with over 25 years of service made it clear to me that our new members would face similar challenges if we did not unite. My focus has always been on empowering our members through shared goals and collective actions. Since that pivotal moment, I have tirelessly advocated for the rights and well-being of every member at ONA. In today's evolving healthcare landscape, visionary governance is essential for ONA to confidently lead us into the future. I have witnessed positive changes with our strategic plan and statement of beliefs guiding our decisions. I am eager to continue to be part of this transformation. As a leader of my 1500 member multi-bargaining unit local, I have gained invaluable experience in labor relations and governance I joined the local executive when our bargaining unit was under board administration. Our members expressed the need for honest, respectful, and meaningful representation. Together with our newly appointed bargaining unit president, we committed to transparency, advocacy, education, and collaboration, ensuring trust within our membership, and our members did feel supported and heard. From small to large bargaining units, it is crucial that we support them in an equitable and inclusive union that embodies our core values. I wanna hear the inspirations and the challenges. My commitment is to collaborate with all of you, our members. The second candidate is Bernie Robinson. Bernie, can you make your statement? Hello, ONA members. As I was preparing for this Meet the Candidate session, I reflected on my 37 years as an ONA member. It is really hard to condense that involvement down to two minutes. I will say that these years, have shaped and prepared me well for this new role as provincial treasurer. As a board member for the past seven years and my 30 years in leadership roles in the bargaining unit and local, I have been part of the changes of ONA. I am proud of how far we have come as advocates, caring professionals and activists. I am proud that we have found our voices. We are talking truth, we stand up for each other in our bargaining units. We come together collectively as a body to fight for our rights. And then we fight for the rights of Ontarians. Early on as a board member, I was asked to mentor and support leaders in bargaining unit and locals that face challenges and conflict. I continue with, the, with this role today. I am proud to see those leaders thrive and they've gained awareness of their roles, responsibilities, ONA's policies, constitution, and bylaws, and ONA's processes. In my portfolio as VP of Local Finance, 
I spoke at the last year's convention about the need for this role to be a standalone position on the board of directors. It was supported by membership and has been instilled into our constitution. It has become even more evident this past year that we indeed made the right decision, that the turnover in our local leadership, in particular with treasurers, has been tremendous. Locals deserve the support of persons focused on their success. We will now go to the question and answer portion of the session. I will pose questions regarding the role of the treasurer to each candidate. The other candidate will be placed in the waiting room and then brought back in to answer the same question. Going alphabetically for the first question, I will pose it to Karen. The treasurer position is a new position added to the board of directors resulting from a constitutional amendment at the 2023 biennial convention. Please describe how you believe this position will be value add to ONA at the board of directors level, the local level, and at the bargaining unit level. I am super excited that this has become a standalone position um, as being a local treasurer. So at the bargaining unit level um, for the last seven years, there has been significant changes um, within this role. The direction of ONA, of ONA has changed significantly and we need to allow the bargaining units and the local executive to pivot in, in their ability to do their job. And to be able to do their job, they need to have the financial resources allocated appropriately. And we have a 49% new treasurer um, group who are learning the ropes. It takes several years to understand the workings of ONA and their leadership. And as leadership changes, the workings of the, of the locals change. I believe that this position will bring back to the board the needs, the changes, the education, the abilities to make the local stronger. Um, and it's not just during budget prep and it's not just during audits, it's throughout the year. We are pivoting monthly at ONA now with the significant changes. And we as locals need to pivot with it and we need to provide those treasurers and, and local leaders the support to do so in a judicially responsible way and to understand the significance of what this means. Thank you. The position of, uh, of Ona Provincial Tre Treasurer adds value to both our bargaining units and locals by providing mentorship opportunities to assist them in their roles and responsibilities in building their local budgets and policies and in supporting the role of the treasurer. Treasurers um, in particular uh, need the guidance and support that is afforded by uh, a single body focused on their successes. And in the role as a board member, it is important to uh, look at ONA as a whole, to be cognizant of our finances uh, provincially and locally and how that transcends down to membership. I believe that engaging all members in decision making and planning for each year's budget is important and it also adds to their knowledge and understanding of ONA on a provincial level. For the second question, I will begin with Bernie. A key responsibility of the treasurer will be to mentor and coach new and existing local treasurers. What experience in mentoring and coaching do you bring as an ONA leader that has prepared you to mentor local treasurers? Thank you for this question. I have spent uh, many of my years in mentorship roles throughout ONA. I've been a local coordinator and I have been a treasurer and I bring this expertise into the, my, my board responsibilities. Also, my responsibilities la in the last seven years as a board member has afforded me with the opportunity to coach and mentor many executives throughout ONA. I bring this to the treasurer's role by understanding the role of the, of the local treasurer, 
by understanding the role of as the VP of finance and the supportive uh, supportive needs that uh, that provides to our local treasures. We will be um, continuing providing education to our local treasures as well as mentorship support to locals for, for creating their budgets and their policies. We also support uh, our bargaining units that go into strike positions, and this is important as well. So I think the overall role of uh, this position, um, I, I have uh, gained uh, sufficient knowledge and expertise to be able to provide that to our membership. With regards to mentoring our new and established um, treasurers, I find this to be the one of the main reasons why I looked at take, um, applying for this position. I have been a mentor. We I own a business outside of nursing and have mentored many um, members through our business. As the grievance chair for the last few years, I have been mentored by many amazing people at ONA who have taught me the skills and the critical thinking required to listen. Mentoring isn't always about teaching. It's about listening to the needs of the membership, the needs of the treasurers, and hearing what's good and celebrating what's good looking what needs to be changed and working collaboratively with these members to ensure that they understand the policies, to make sure that they are following the policies within the provincial and understanding the rationale behind those policies. Mentoring is not a dictatorship. It is a collaborative effort. Um, as I mentor, I too will be mentored by them. They will be bringing solutions that we can share amongst all the treasurers. Mentoring is something that we do every day. We do it in our everyday lives as a nurse. We do it as parents. We do it um, as colleagues. And in mentoring, we need to be supportive. We don't need to be judgmental. And I think we need to be present. I think the biggest part for me is that you are present with your colleagues, that you hear what they need to say. And you may not have the answers at the time, but promise that you'll get back to them using the provincial team, using the board of directors, using the mentors that I have reached out to in the past to mentor me in the ability to mentor them. For the third question, I will begin with Karen. This is a follow-up question to the last question. In your view, what are the key challenges facing our local treasurers and how would you support them with these challenges? So with, with follow-up to the key challenges, we are looking at a 49% new treasurer position within ONA. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to learn what is needed, what works, what do they want to see change, what, what mentoring is available within ONA itself. There is a lot of good things happening in the treasurer's role. Do we need to have teleconnects with these members? Do we need to support them? Do we need to provide education for the LCs with regards to the treasurer role? Um, we know that we do it with our new LCs and our new treasurers together, but what, what education is needed? What education is there? ensuring that they have the time to do the education, making sure that somebody is there to answer their questions. Things within the finance department are timely. Things need to be done within a, a quick turnaround a lot of time, and somebody needs to be able to be able to support these people during this time. I think it's important that we work together as a team. Ona is pivoting and you know, we have set the foundations in ONA and things are changing. We are looking now at what does each local require? Some locals require tons of education. It's a new leadership group. For some, their education is strong and they need, you know, to put strategic plans in place for, you know, whether it be for, <clears throat> pardon me, 
member engagement, employee relations. We need to tackle that. And we need to do that through open and, you know, collaborative communication. I think that's huge. And being there for 12 months out of the year is going to be amazing. In the past year, I have noted that the role of the treasurer has become com increasingly complex. Working within the SAGE program and understanding the government requirements has been a few of the most uh, paramount challenges with our treasurers. Uh, as the provincial treasurer, it would be up to me to uh, help support them um, with their questions around their their work that they do in uh, the SAGE programs and to work with our finance team and understanding uh, the requirements around government remittances and how that uh, how our locals uh, local treasurers can um, meet the requirements uh, and legal obligations uh, towards the government. For the fourth question, I will begin with Bernie. This question has two parts. The first part, what does fiduciary accountability mean to you? Fiduciary accountability encompasses uh, many things, but essentially it does mean that we are cognizant of our financial responsibilities towards membership and towards the, the values which we support. We have to align um, our membership spending with um, the things that support membership and ensuring that we are meeting um, the needs of the membership through uh, very uh, purposeful uh, fiduciary decisions within, um, not only within Ona provincially, but within our locals and bargaining unit spending. Fiduciary responsibility, very important to me. I feel that all 68,000 members who pay dues to our union deserve the exact representation that they require. We realize that there is a limited amount of funding to be presented, and we must be smart in how these dues are divided, whether through the local or through central. And I think we have looked at this over the past couple of years, and it's something that I'm really proud of, that they are looking at the needs. They are looking at how to best spend this money. Each local is provided a certain amount based on the number of members that they have. And we have supplemented funded locals. These are locals that have not enough members to support them. And Ona Central has agreed to provide additional funding for these groups to ensure that they have the same education and the same knowledge to represent each and every member. Every member should have the ability to feel supported. And with that, we need to be smart. We need to follow the policies that have been put in place. We need to be accountable for the spending that happens within the budgets of all the locals. We need to ensure that we are doing what's best for our membership. This money is hard earned by everyone who puts um, their dues forward. And we need to prove to them that we are spending their money in the best financial, productive way to bring their jobs to be safe, to have proper staffing ratios, to ensure that they are protected. As treasurer, how would you ensure membership dues are spent with integrity? In my role as treasurer, Assisting locals to spend membership dues with integrity starts with strategic bu budgeting and policy making to ensure that the local leaders, the bargaining unit leaders, are provided with some paid time to be able to administer to the affairs of their bargaining units and to make sure that our members are represented uh, in a wholesome manner in a complete manner. 
membership dues being spent with integrity, we have some safeguards in place. We have audits that take place within the locals every year that go back to central and are reviewed to see where the funding is being spent. When there is something that is outstanding, central and the VP of finance question it. They look into it. We need to make sure that when budgets are being presented at a local level, that the membership understand what the dues is going to be used for. There are guidelines, 10% for education minimal, that members are being serviced by their locals and that their locals are present for them. If there's concerns, they need to be brought forward to the board. They need to be investigated. And when you are setting your budget, it is imperative that your membership understand why you've put funds into a certain spot and why you feel the need to put things there. We need to empower all members to ask questions. It is not our unit union as executives or members of the board. It is their union and they have the right to understand this and we need to provide the education. We need to be transparent in everything that we do. We are advocates for these members and we are not there to do anything that our members have not reached out for us to do. And I think it's really important that we maintain that transparency at all levels across the union. Part of the accountabilities of the treasurer is to support local executives with strategic planning and budgeting and helping to resolve financial issues. Please share any of your related ONA leadership experience that has prepared you for this role. As I mentioned before, I came into a bargaining unit that was under um, board administration. We were put into board administration because before I came into, we were in board administration. We needed to ensure that we were doing what was best for our membership. Sitting down with the locals prior to them actually putting numbers to their budget, talking about what their individual strategic plan is for their local, following the guidelines from Central, but ensuring that we are meeting their needs. Um, when we are putting a budget together, presenting those needs to their members, ensuring that everybody is on the same strategic plan. We need member engagement. We need our members to feel that we are supporting them to the best of their abilities. And to do that, we need to be honest with them. We need to share our vision. We need to listen to their vision. What is their vision? What are their needs from the union? Let's look at evidence. Where have they been spending their money in the years past? Is it enough? Are they putting funds into areas that don't necessarily need that kind of funding and put it into er different areas? Let's break it down brick by brick, individually as a local, and see what we need to do to ensure that we are providing the best services for our membership. And I think if we don't do that, then we are not, you know, we are not looking at the locals as a whole. We are not looking at the union as a whole. And to me, that's very important that we work together collaboratively, ensuring that we're growing, we're getting stronger, we're building, we're gaining the trust of our membership. Our membership's growing. We are getting more and more bargaining units that are wanting to join and assigning union cards. In this past year, I have been able to help over 30 locals develop their budgets and policies for this past fiscal year. I believe that we were able to uh, put into practice uh, and use the funds in a responsible way that afforded support of uh, not only bargaining unit uh, leaders, but also in the development of new leaders through education uh, spending and in um, bringing them to events such as area coordinator conferences, provincial coordinator meetings, and um, and other uh, events that have taken place, political action, et cetera. So I was able to help these members, these locals, to look at their budgets as a whole, 
to spend the the leader the membership money with integrity and uh, to be responsible to their membership and allow them also the chance to make the decisions in how these uh, monies and policies are spent and developed. For the sixth question, I will begin with Bernie. Some locals are supplementally funded by ONA because they do not have the membership base to generate the revenue from members' dues to support the union's work. How would you work with supplementally funded locals to ensure members have equitable access to opportunities to engage with their union? Coming from a supplementally funded local, I can uh, appreciate how these locals um, use the funds that they have been um, that they have uh, acquired from uh, our own plan. And I know that uh, as a local coordinator and as a treasurer, we did use creative uh, budgeting practices to make sure that um, a lot of our members were benefiting from the, the funds that uh, were generated as um, into supplementary funding. Uh, we did. Uh, we were able to use our education funds uh, in particular uh, because uh, we do uh, receive fifteen percent of our budget uh, towards education, and that was um, we we got very creative uh, using those things. So I can transfer that knowledge uh, down to the local, uh, the supplementary funded locals uh, that we support as the treasurer. Um, and we also need to uh, look at all of the revenue sources sources that we are provided uh, by ONA and through the supplementary funding process. Um, things like Northern Allowance and Travel Allowance and um, the extra funding that uh, bargaining units and locals get uh, when they are under 1,200 members. So using all of these resources uh, does help us to uh, be able to uh, have creative ways and some autonomy in how um, our membership dues are spent within the local. Being the treasurer for the last seven years, I've had the opportunity to sit down with many treasurers through treasurers meetings or different meetings put on by ONA. And we've had these conversations and I've had the ability to sit down with these supplemental funded treasurers. They work tirelessly to ensure that they provide the best that they can for their leaders. We need to look at the supplemental funded um, template. We need to bring in the members from the supplemental funding um, group. And we need to put a business plan together if it isn't working, that they aren't being able to meet the needs of their members. We need to look at the good. We need to celebrate the positive and we need to look at what may need to be brought forward, whether it be more education, maybe it be more guidance. We're fortunate. Technology has come a long way and our most of our supplemental funded um, members are in groups of tiny bargaining units that have difficulty getting together for education. We have a dynamic education team that can reach out now. We can do things online. We can ensure that they're getting the education that they need. But again, we need to sit down at the time of budgeting and we need to look at their strategic plans. We need to see what they need to feel that they can represent their members um, to the fullest. Sometimes it's not money, sometimes it's time, sometimes it's the ability to get time off to do the work of the union. We need to work with our local negotiations to ensure that these members have guaranteed time, protected time to do the work. I think we need to look at what they need. We need to stop and we need to listen. We need to pull a business plan together for these members. For your final question, I will begin with Karen. What would be your top three priorities as treasurer? Well, my top three priorities as treasurer is to number one, and in everything that I do for the union, 
is to provide equitable, reliable, informed, transparent information to every single member of owner. Number two, ensure that all treasurers have the knowledge, the education, the skills, the confidence to provide the best services for their locals, to have a voice to do so. And number three, is to ensure that support for all locals, to, regardless where they are at, whether they're a brand new bargaining unit, whether they are an established bargaining unit, a bargaining unit of four or a bargaining unit of 4,000, that they have the same supports in place as the treasurer and that their concerns and their priorities are brought forward to the board. Every voice matters. And with that, I really, as a treasurer, working with the locals and the LCs and making sure that the locals understand the significance of the budget and balance sheets and income statements um, and what that means and what it means for us to move forward as a, as a union. For me, those are my priorities. I want to see Ona number one. I want people to be envious of what our union has done. And to do that, I need to support those treasurers and the treasurers need to be heard. My top three priorities as the provincial treasurer would be number one, in working with the board of directors to advance the mission, vision, values, and strategic plan of ONA. Two, to guide local treasurers in their day-to-day -day work and through their processes and practices that they have to follow. And three, to guide locals in meeting their fiduciary accountabilities and governance roles and responsibilities and accountabilities. Thank you, candidates. We will now hear your closing statements of no more than two minutes. The first candidate to make a closing statement will be Karen. I guess in conclusion, I just want to share my vision for our union during this transformative time. Transparency and membership engagement has never been stronger, and I am proud to stand with them in this evolution. With my recent treasurer experience, I aim to bring fresh perspectives to the board. Together, we can ensure that our union grows stronger and more united. It's crucial that we assess the needs at each local. Armed with evidence, I will advocate for our treasurers and local leaders. Our employers across all sectors must be held accountable to our collective agreements, both centrally and locally. By collaborating with leaders, we can provide educational resources and guide through solidarity to represent every treasurer and member effectively. We must hold our employers, the government and the public accountable. Our collective rights and interests deserve unwavering representation. I may not have all the answers, but my passion for this role drives me to work tirelessly along each side of you, and I will work with our leaders to find the answers. Together, we can strengthen our union and ensure it empowers all of us. As ballots arrive in your mailbox this week, I encourage you to visit the ONA website, learn about all the candidates, and vote for those who will fortify and strengthen our union. Remember, while only one voice may while one voice may be overlooked, our collective voices will resonate. I also encourage you to engage with five colleagues. Ask them to vote. Strengthening our engagement is vital to uniting our membership. My vision for the future is a safe, strong, and united public health care system, one we all can take pride in, knowing we played a part in that transformation. Allow me to support our treasurers and local leaders to provide a stronger health care and keep our health care public and our members safe. Thank you for your trust and your support. Thank you, everyone. In the role of treasurers, I will continue to work with our board of directors, finance team, and locals in developing strong local budgets and policies that will support the day-to-day -day work of bargaining unit leaders to ensure our members are represented and their dues are spent with integrity. 
ONA's provincial and local budgets and policies need to be strategic, multifaceted, and forward-thinking. They must provide mentorship opportunities with succession planning in mind. Together with our finance team, our ONA educators, we need to continue to develop education for local treasurers that supports the transfer of knowledge of emerging trends, new support tools that our treasurers use in their roles, and changes that occur in the world of finance. Having opportunities for treasurers to learn side by side, network will con and networking will continue to be provided. Our membership is growing and we have a wealth of vibrant new members looking for us to guide them as they move along their career paths. I'm glad that our succession plans include membership engagement and hopeful that these members will choose to be ONA leaders. I look forward to seeing and supporting this growth as ONA's provincial treasurer. Thank you. Thank you to all the candidates for participating in this session. Please check out the ONA website for the videos, resumes, and articles of each of the candidates. Any member questions regarding the election can be directed to the Chief Electoral Officer email, which is chiefelectoralofficer at ona.org. Thank you.